Hi, this is Donovan from the Batman Universe. I'm here with Glenn Murakami and Mitch Watson talking about Beware the Batman. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank Good. you for having us. Excellent. Now, starting off, obviously there have been many different incarnations of Batman throughout the years, some that you guys have been involved with. How did you come to this project and how would you say it differentiates this from previous shows? Uh, well, I was, uh, they asked me to come on and try to develop a new version of the show, and we went through various incarnations over a year, and some of them took, some of them didn't, some of them were a little too dark, some of them weren't so dark, and then Glenn came on board, and, uh, and Glenn's, I Glenn's initial idea was, hey, let's, why don't we look back and, and do villains that have never been touched upon before, and that sort of got the ball rolling. And then we said, okay, well, then how we, what are we going to do with Batman? We said, well, let's take Batman. You know, we know his gadgets. We know all the stuff. We know the stuff that Nolan has done, that Bruce Timm has done. Let's take him all the way back to sort of the beginning when he was really just a detective, a guy who, he was a detective who also dresses a bat and, you know, had, you know, abilities and gear and stuff like that. But really, at his core, he was Sherlock Holmes. So that's sort of what we decided to do with it and where we went with it. This is so just, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, visually what's different, it's CGI versus 2D, so that's the big difference. So um, it's going to be more Batman sort of existing in a physical world, in a 3D space. So I, I think it'll have a slightly more um, kind of cinematic quality, but a, but a more of a realistic feel than what we've kind yeah, of done in the doing, past. Because the lighting that you're doing and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which you couldn't really do in 2D. So would you say that it starts at near the beginning of Batman's career, or are you going up for that specifically? No, we, we, we decided not to do that. We wanted to do it. We set him, he's probably in his early 30s, like 33. So he's been doing it, I think we talked about it, probably about five, six years. So yeah, it's not, it's not new. He's been Batman for a while, yeah. but now he's starting to face some of these villains who he hasn't really dealt with before. Yeah. So it's not Batman year one, but, no. but it is. And it's not origin story or anything yeah. like that. He's Batman, he knows what he's doing and that kind of thing. The only one we really sort of dialed the clock back on was uh, Gordon. So he's Lieutenant Gordon in, in this. At least he starts out as Lieutenant Gordon. But he's, besides that, no, it's, it's, uh, it's in the future. I mean, a lot of the story hinges upon his relationship with Alfred and Alfred's own mortality, and, and that's kind of why the Katana character comes into the whole thing. Okay, you just brought up these supporting characters. How would you say these characters play in? Are you using any characters that have not been seen before in previous shows? Yeah. Um, well, I'll Katana has been seen briefly, but not, not, not like in the this. way we're portraying the characters. So... Um, uh, uh, everything, we've put a slightly different spin on everything, yeah. uh, so uh, our version of Alfred's a little bit different, and, um, um, and Katana too, I mean, yeah. we, w DC's been uh, really generous with us, and we can't, you know, we've been in touch with a guy who created Katana, and, you know, they, DC's, they pretty much said, like, just run stuff by us, you know, and they, they give their feedback, but they've been, so far, really, really cool with everything, all the changes that we've made. I mean, it's not, we're not doing anything drastic, like, you know, giving Alfred a horn or something like I mean, that that comes out of his head. When we talked about the show, we talked about what, what's core Batman or what's pure Batman, and we tried to keep those elements, but we still tried to bring something new to the table, different that the fans haven't seen. So yeah. it's not exactly what the comics are doing, but it's not, not what we've done with, with any of the animated series. Yeah, like for instance, I mean, we've talked about this before and other things, but, you know, Alfred's character is, Alfred's probably the most different of all the characters, simply because we, we looked at him and said, okay, everybody knows him as Michael Caine, or the sort of prissy, you know, you know, kind aristocratic of butler. English dandy, kind yeah. of very buttoned up, proper English gentleman, and we were like, let's do something different with yeah. him. So he's much more, um, he's Sean Connery from The Untouchables. I mean, he's got, he is probably in his youth was a lot like Bruce Wayne, Batman. I mean, he's, he can kick some ass. He can still kick some ass. It's just that he's getting older and he knows that he's not going to be around forever. And part of the show deals with his past and his past coming back to haunt him and stuff like that. So. I mean, they've hinted uh, that with Alfred in the past in some of the comics saying he had, like, military experience or he you know he was like a medic in the war or something like that so we were just like well what if we focus more on Alfred being that kind of character than being like a yeah. just a butler so that's the direction we've kind of gone with with Alfred so it still feels like it's 
elements that people have done in the past. It's just we're focusing on it differently. So. You talked about um, checking with DC and seeing like what six sort of has the new 52 influenced this show in any way? No, so. not really. I mean, one of the one of the one of the things that works in our favor is there've been so many iterations of Batman that w and DC's been cool about this. We've been able to sort of pick and choose from the different storylines and stuff like that, things that we like and pull them into ours as opposed to following one particular canon or one version of things. I mean, they, they, you know, Brave and the Bold was more the 50s comic book Batman, and then they've just done Year One, and they're doing Dark Knight, so, and then what the Nolans are doing, so it just seems like they're more open to doing different things with the character. It's just, yeah, we're not sticking to one continuity or one timeline or, or what one creator has done, so we're just kind of mixing it up. And finally, can you talk about any bit of the villains that we'll see that are different or, you know, different takes on old past villains? Are we allowed, what, what villains are we I allowed? Mean, are we allowed to bring up villains? Pig and Professor Pig and Mr. Toad, Anarchy. Grant Morrison, they're from the Grant Morrison thing. You know, we, if you're familiar with those characters, Pig and Toad, especially Professor Pig, he's a psychopath in the Grant Morrison. He's, a, and he, he's vicious and <laughs> horrible. We couldn't quite go that far with him, so we gave him a different type of spin and, you know, and he and... He and Toad are these kind of, um, we base them on sort of like those James Bond villains from yeah. Mr. Kidd and what yeah. was the, the two, do you remember those, do you remember the two guys? Mr. Wendt. Mr. Kidd yeah. and Mr. Wendt, yeah. So they're kind of like that, these sort of ones, Udo Kier plays Mr. Toad, he's, Udo Kier's a famous German actor and best known as being a vampire usually, so he's got his crazy ass and Pig is a very, you know, he's got his British accent, they ride around in a little steampunk car, you know, it's... We had it's a lot of fun with those It's different than what guys. the comic has done, but we've sort of taken the essence of all of these villains, Magpie, Anarchy, and we've put a different spin on them. Yeah. And, and we've tried to distill them down so they feel very much in the same vein as the, the classics rogue, rogues gallery. But um, we just wanted to do something different. We, before we started, we looked at a bunch of Batman stuff, and we are like, well, everyone is using these characters. We need to do something kind of different. So let's spotlight some of these villains who are kind of lesser villains or not, not just as exposed as much. So we're like, well, why don't we focus on them and see how that changes the dynamic. And, yeah. and the whole show, it feels like a Batman show. It just feels like something you haven't seen before. Yeah, and in, in some cases we used the character, we, we directly lifted the characters, the villains, their backgrounds and stuff like that. In other ones, we created almost completely new things out of whole cloth. Because some of the villains we wanted, we chose, really there wasn't much about them. They were very little known. There's a, there's one character named Cypher, yeah, who, you, there's very little known about that guy. You know, that's kind of been the fun thing is we've talked to other people about it and we'll mention who we're using, like, I don't even know who that guy is. And we're like, yeah, cool, all right. So. Well, I, I mean, I think it's very much in the same way as the Batman the Animated Series. I think, you know, you take the essence of all the characters and you just try to distill it down. So even w what, you know, Bruce and Eric did before, Alan did before, um, I, I feel like we're doing the same thing. We're, we're taking the best parts of certain characters and trying to come up with something new with it. So it's, it's not so much that there was anything wrong with those characters, it's just almost like their storylines were really complicated or spanned over a long time, and, and we just, we had to simplify it for a 22 minute episode. Uh, from Glenn, Wa Glenn, Glenn Murray Comedy and Mitch Washington, this is Don from the Batman Universe, thank you very much. Thank you.